What's going on guys? Aaron Browning here from Aaron B. Cooking and I'm really, really excited about today's cook. We're gonna throw down some ribeyes, right? Who doesn't love a great ribeye? But what I'm really excited to talk about today is what's standing right behind me. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. We're gonna be cooking these ribeyes via sous vide, right? And I know many of you have heard that. It's been around for a number of years. I got introduced to it about a year ago on a trip to Iceland. Um, a good friend of mine who's hopefully watching this video cooked some amazing, amazing lamb loin chops and they came out perfect. But what I loved most about what he did that day is he was actually able to entertain. He socialized with our family without having to sit by the grill, sit by the, the cook stone, the cook stone, the, the black stone, the, the, the cast iron, whatever you prefer to cook on, right? Because it's plug and play. And that's what we're gonna walk you guys through today. So let's go ahead and get after it. Okay guys, we're gonna keep everything super, super simple, right? Because the goal of this is for that anybody watching this can do this, whether it's a weekend or even a weekday, right? That's the beauty of sous vide. So let's keep it easy with the seasoning as well. So we're of course gonna use avocado oil. You guys all know this. I love it because of the high smoke point. And then my favorite, favorite seasoning for New York strips and ribeyes, right? Fattier meat is this Montreal steak seasoning. And yes, you can tell from the size. I do a lot of shopping at Costco, right? It's the glutton size. Let's keep it easy. Let's get after it. Okay guys, so apply a generous portion of this oil, right? As you can see, we're just gonna give it a quick rub, nothing fancy here. And we're gonna turn it over, we're gonna get both sides done. Okay, perfect. And that's really gonna help to get this Montreal seasoning to stick, guys. And as you can see, I already know someone's gonna say in the comments, yes, I go heavy here. For one, it's gonna be in a sous vide for about two hours, right? Um, it also is gonna give a really, really nice crust. Um, and you can see the pepper, guys. That's part of the reason I absolutely love this seasoning. So let's go ahead and flip it over. Man, you can smell the garlic, everything. So, so good, guys. And you can't forget the sides. Of course, you can roll it around and not waste some but you're gonna have some waste as part of it. That one looks good, guys. And there we go, guys. That is, I mean, how simple is that, right? Took less than a minute to get everything oiled and seasoned. Okay, guys, steak, the steaks are seasoned and ready to go. Our next step is to get them into these food saver bags. Can use a Ziploc bag 100%. The key here, guys, with sous vide is all the air, as much as possible, has to be removed so that the, the whatever you're cooking has, has contact with the water, right? So that it can get to that temperature. One of the little trick I picked up is I like to roll the end of the bag. This way you don't get the seasoning or the oil on it. You're gonna be able to get a really good seal that I'm gonna show you guys here in just a second. So with that, let's go ahead and throw these guys in. And because these bags are smaller today, I'm actually gonna do uh, one per bag. It's gonna look just like that. And then one last thing I am going to do um, that I do on almost every cook, guys, especially with steaks, I'm gonna go ahead and add some fresh thyme. And you're just gonna gently put that on top and let it do, it, let it, let it do its thing over the next two hours. Okay guys, the ribeyes are in the bags. They are all set with the seasoning, with the oil, with the fresh thyme. Next thing we're gonna do is actually remove all the air and then seal it. I'm choosing today to use a food saver model, also from Costco. Costco should be sponsoring this video now that I think about it. Um, but like I said, you can use any model that you like. I've even seen some people not use one of these at all. They'll use a Ziploc bag, they drop it in the water bath and, and do their best to get the air out. I believe in simplicity. So this is one of those things I use several times a week. It was a great, great value in my humble opinion. So let me show you guys how it works. So as you can see here, because I wrapped, I'm sorry, because I rolled the bag on these steaks, the end pieces are now clean, which is really gonna allow for a great, um, a great seal. So all you do is you put it into the little reservoir here and then you close it down like that, you lock it up. And because we're doing sous vide, I'm gonna go ahead and change the mode to, to, to sous vide, and we're gonna do a vacuum and seal at the same time. And as you guys can see, look at this, it's actually sucking the air out in real time. It's un, un freaking believable. Um, and it takes, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds. You're gonna see, if done correctly, it's gonna get really, really tight. Look at that, you can see the moisture. 
and then you're gonna hear it kick over. Right now, it's actually gonna go ahead and give that seal so that the bag uh, becomes airtight so we can drop it in the water. Hey guys, so we got everything in the bags as you saw. Once again, a very, very easy process. What I just finished, guys, I went, went ahead and set up the water bath. I have it set to 130 degrees with a two hour timer. 130 degrees is a perfect, I'm gonna call it like a rare to medium rare. And the reason I want a little bit of cushion, because I wanna end with that medium rare cut, is because I'm gonna sear these at the very end to give it that really, really nice crust, right? So 130 for, for myself and my family has been absolutely perfect. Yes, it's a two hour cook. I know someone's gonna comment on that. These are very, very thick, guys, as you can see. Um, I think they're you know a little bit over an inch, so they're gonna need that time. And once again, the cool part about this is the flexibility. Meaning, let's say I'm picking the kids up here soon from school and it's two hours and 30 minutes, two hours and 40 minutes. Guess what? It's going to be okay, right? Which if, you, if I was cooking these just on a grill, just on a Blackstone, just in the cast iron, that doesn't happen. I gotta be here, I gotta plan everything. And so having that flexibility is just absolutely unreal. Let's go ahead and get these in the bath. <laughs> Welcome back. Yes, through the magic of editing, two hours have gone by. In fact, full disclosure, right? It proves this point so, so perfectly. It's actually been two hours and 27 minutes. I got caught up with a J-O-B. I had to make a quick call, um, and so it, it went a little bit longer, but that's the magic of cooking sous vide, guys, is that there's that threshold, right? To where you don't have to be you know, married to it, sitting here waiting for that timer to go off. I was able to get done what I had to get done to come back to a perfectly cooked steak. So let's go ahead and open this bag up and see how good they look. And yes, I know, especially if, for those of you watching that haven't done this yet before, I know it's not going to look great once I get it out of the bag. And that's part of the reason that you have to sear it afterward. And you can sear with your choice of, 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 of weapons, right, if you will. Um, today we're gonna use cast iron, because as you can probably see behind me, it is, it is about, I think, 24 degrees last time I checked. Um, and it is cold. So normally I would do it on the Blackstone or even the Big Green Egg, but we're gonna use cast iron today. So one of the tips, guys, for a really good sear is that you really, really need to dry this. Um, it, I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's pivotal. And I see that mistake so many times is that they'll end up throwing it on a, a cast iron pan or a Blackstone and it's, it's still really wet. It still uh, has the oil and everything else on it. I am gonna go ahead and set this time to the side um, but as you can see here in a few minutes, guys, I actually will throw that in the uh, in the skillet as well. Okay, guys, so we got everything dry. Now we're going to move this over to the cast iron pan. And guys, as you will soon see on this channel, if you haven't already, if I'm cooking indoors, it's almost exclusively on cast iron. I just absolutely love it. Um, I'm going to show you one quick ingredient, though, that I got turned on to probably about a year ago, um, a year ago or so, and it's called Wagyu beef tallow, guys. Um, obviously not an endorsement or anything like that, but this stuff is magic. It's packed with flavor. Um, you can get it on Amazon. I'll throw a link in the description below so you guys can see it, but it is so, so good. I use it all the time, almost exclusively too, by the way. Only other thing I'm gonna add to it, guys, is thyme um, and a little bit of fresh garlic just to really, really wake up those flavors as I baste it. So let's go ahead and do this. Okay, let's get the beef tallow in the pan. As you can see, this thing is piping hot, guys. Just gonna move it all around, get it really, really nice and melted here. Oh, this stuff is magic, guys. I'm telling you, I am telling you. All right, let's get some garlic in there. You can hear it. Get the thyme going as well. And then you can't cook a steak without butter. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get it going, guys. And as I mentioned earlier, we're probably gonna be about a minute to a minute and a half each side on this. And I'm just lightly pushing it down, really making sure I have even contact throughout. Oh, I wish you guys could smell this. <laughs> I 
And then let it do its thing, guys. You don't have to rush it. We're really looking for a nice sear on this. And the cool part too, is I'm not having to worry about the internal temperature. I know it's 130 degrees because that's what the bath was at, right? Um, and once again, that's really, really the beauty of cooking sous vide. And if you really wanted to, you were getting impatient, could you do a little peek? Absolutely. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and let the pan do its thing. You can really start to smell the garlic and the thyme right now as well. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and give this thing a flip. Look at that, guys. <laughs> I'm telling you. And then we're gonna start to do that famous uh, Instagram YouTube base, right? We're just gonna get some of this butter, garlic, tallow mixture back on it. And we're gonna give it another minute or so. All right. Guys, I mean, how good does that look, right? This is the hardest part of the cook, is now wet letting, let, letting this steak rest for the next like eight to 10 minutes at least. And it is tough, believe me. I know I'm supposed to do this, especially for the show, but all I wanna do is cut into this thing because it looks and smells absolutely fantastic. All right, all right, the time has come, guys. So it has been now close to 11 minutes. Full disclosure again, I had to leave the kitchen. I could not stay here and wait 10, 11 minutes. I don't have the willpower to do it, so I had to physically leave the room because this thing looks and smells absolutely fantastic. So without further ado, let's get in here and see what we're working with, guys. And I already know, I already know. Let's look at that. I mean, guys, I'm telling you, that is the power of sous vide. You can see it, how you're not on a typical grill, unless you're very, very good, you're used to doing this all the time, you're gonna get major grill lines. So maybe that medium rare piece is just in here, but you can see it, it's, it, it's end to end, guys, end to end. Let's go ahead and turn this thing so you can see everything. I mean, guys, come on. All right, guys, we gotta try it. We gotta try it. I mean, I absolutely have to. Let's go ahead and cut this. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna show this, guys. I mean, unbelievable. Hopefully you can pick that up. I mean, so good. Mm. Next time I need to take a smaller piece. I mean, it's just perfect, guys. Absolutely perfect. It has a great crust on it. It is so, so tender. Because we sear it at the end, all that moisture is trapped in. As I said, it is cooked end to end, medium rare, 130, exactly how myself and my family like it. Guys, if you haven't done this type of cook, I strongly, strongly suggest you do because it is a game changer. It frees up so much time, especially when you're having people over, guys. You're gonna look like a pro. You're gonna look like a pro. You can serve a steak exactly how you want it served and know it's going to be that way every single time. It gets no better, guys. It's an amazing, amazing cook. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please, please, if I've earned it from you, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. It would mean the world to me. Um, we're gonna bring some amazing, amazing content to you guys each and every week. Hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Be good, be safe, and God bless.